it took me a while to get to the point where I could design my own Arduino projects for model railroads. And that was because at the time, Arduinos were just starting to get popular in our hobby, so all of the starter projects weren't geared for model trains. Today, I have a simple starter Arduino project that you can use three different ways to add some light animation to your layout. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. These videos would not be possible without them, and if you'd like to join the Patreon community, you can follow the link in the description below and join for as little as $1 a month. So before we can program anything, we need to build our Arduino project, which is a pretty straightforward build. Here is a complete list of all the parts you're going to need for this build, and I'll have all of them linked in the description below. We start this project where I always start my prototype projects with an Arduino Uno and a breadboard. Now you can do this with an Arduino Mega or an Arduino Nano or pretty much anything Arduino, but I like to use Unos because they're pretty easy to use and they're a great starting point for most projects. First things first, let's hook up power. I'm gonna start actually with the ground connection first and rather than hooking it straight to the power bus on the breadboard, I'm gonna connect it to a row and then I'm going to jump a 1K resistor from that row to the power bus. Now the reason for this is you need a resistor in the circuit with the LED so that you don't blow out the LEDs because sometimes the current can be too much depending on the type of LEDs that you use. So next up, I'm going to be putting my LEDs in place. Now with LEDs like this, you're going to have the long side is your anode or your positive side and your short side is your cathode or your negative side. So I'm gonna end up doing four LEDs but I accidentally didn't hook up that fourth LED till the end. So you're going to see me hook up these first three LEDs and then the fourth one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to jump from the board to the LEDs. Now, the positive side is going to connect to a digital output on there. And we're going to be using pins three, four, five, and six for those outputs. So we start off by connecting our first LED to digital output three and connecting its anode side to that and then we're going to do the second LED to input or output four and then we're going to do the third LED to output five now these are some pretty small parts and I have big hands so I know it can be tough to see uh, when I am actually building these and I do my best but I will have a schematic linked in the description below so that you can follow along Next, I need to hook up all of the cathode sides to our ground bus that we wired up just a minute ago. So I'm just gonna hook those all up to the blue side of this bus on the breadboard. And now it's time to hook up that fourth LED that I forgot to install. A little bit of a bonehead moment right there, but it's the exact same process. I'm going to be connecting the anode side, the positive side to digital pin six and using that as an output. And then the cathode side, which is the negative, is going to connect to that blue power bus on the breadboard, same as the rest of the LEDs. Now it's time to do some coding. I know that sounds difficult, but it's really not. I have links to the software in the description below, and if you don't wanna do the coding, I'm gonna have all the Arduino sketches linked below as well. First, we're going to tackle a police strobe light. I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I typically do my Arduino projects. I'm going to write the entire code right now, and then we're gonna go back and walk through it. This works fine because this is some relatively short and simple code. Now, this is not the shortest way to write this code, but it is the easiest to understand. 
Okay, let's start off at the top right now. We have INT time delay. Now what I'm basically doing up there is setting up an integer called time delay and I'm making it equal to 50. What this is is basically time in an Arduino is measured in milliseconds. So this is 50 milliseconds or 5% of one second. So that's gonna be important later, but remember that. Next thing I'm gonna look up here is the void setup. This is a loop that's going to run once to get everything set up. And basically what I'm doing is I'm telling it that digital pins three, four, five, and six are output by saying pin mode parentheses three comma output and so on and so forth. Now we're getting into the main loop of the program, the void loop. This is the repeating part of the program that when it gets to the end of its sequence, it's going to go right back to the start. You see I have a lot of digital writes for the three, four, five, and six. Basically, this is sending commands to digital pins 3, 4, 5, and 6 that we established as outputs in the setup. And you see highs and lows. Think of those as ons and offs. So 3 and 4 on the first two lines are on, and then 5 and 6 are off in the third and fourth line. And then you have a delay. So that means that two of the four LEDs are on, and then we have a delay before the next set of commands. And you see that says delay time delay remember that we set the time delay to 50 milliseconds at the very beginning that means that the program is going to leave those lights on for 50 milliseconds before it goes to the next series of commands which is digital right three four five and six are all low which means that all the leds are off and it's going to wait 50 milliseconds before moving to the next step in the sequence now i copy and paste it and basically have that same sequence run three times in a row before changing and when it changed, instead of having digital pins three and four be high or the LEDs connected to three and four be on and off, I switched to doing LEDs connected to pins five and six turning on and off. And this will give the strobe back and forth look of the police lights. We can then upload our code to the Arduino and then plug it in and voila, we get some strobing police lights. See, that wasn't so bad. Now on to the second project, a chasing light, which you can use on a marquee or something similar. This sketch is very similar to the previous one. The only difference you can see right here is that I did INT time as my interval, and that's not really a big deal. You can still use time delay as your interval. It actually might make it a little bit easier, but I used the identical setup with the three, four, five, and six, and then it was time to do the loop, which is still very similar. It just has a very different sequence. So our marquee chasing light effect is actually pretty simple to animate. All we have to do is implement three different sequences with a delay on them. The first is going to be pins three and six are on. The second is going to be pin four is on. And the third is going to be pin five is on. So if you think of this as three, four, five, and six are all in a line, pins three and six are the first and the last one, which means that the first part of the sequence has the last one looking like the light is going off and the first one is coming on. Then the second part of the sequence has pin four on, which means the LED is on, which means that it's at the second position. And the third part is pin five on, which is the third position. And then it loops back to the start with the last one and the first one on again. And check out the way it looks. Now you may be feeling a bit confident, so we're gonna change it up a bit, but not by much. The third and final project is a program that will randomly turn lights on and off. You can use this in one or multiple buildings to simulate people randomly turning lights on and off in a night scene of a town. This code's actually a lot shorter than the other two, but it's got some slightly more complicated coding as well as some different commands. So let's go over these. First of all, let's take a look at the integers. You see two of them, you have random light and time on. We're going to use the random light to be able to store the value of which light we're going to turn on. And then time on is going to be what we save as the random time that the light is going to be on. 
The setup is once again identical. So let's move on to the loop and you can see it's pretty short. So first of all, you can see that I have random light equals random between three and six. What this is basically saying is that the integer random light that we established at the beginning is going to equal a random selection between the numbers three and six. This is going to correspond to pins three, four, five, and six. So it's going to pick one of those numbers to be able to turn on. Then you see on our next line, we have time on equals random parentheses 500 to 5,000. Now remember that time is measured in milliseconds, so this is half a second to five seconds. Now, obviously, if you're doing this for a town scene, you're gonna want it to be a lot longer. So if say you want it to be a minute, you'd be doing 60,000 as the max. And, or if you wanna do minute as the minimum and five minutes as the maximum, you'd be doing 60,000 to 300,000. I'm doing this just to demonstrate how it works so you can see it a little bit faster. Next, we have digital right random light high, which is our randomly selected pin, turning it on so that turns on an LED. Then we have the delay of the randomly selected time. And then we have a digital right random light low, which turns our LED back off. And then it resets and picks another random number and random time before turning it back on again. Once you've uploaded this and you plug it in, this is what it looks like. Arduinos can open up an entire world of customization to your model railroad. These three projects are very simple to build and program and can help you get your feet wet in the world of Arduinos. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.